Hey, welcome everyone back to the channel. Chad here. Uh, today's lab is going to be covering how to configure a GRE tunnel and then also how to configure that tunnel to encrypt traffic with IPsec. Now GRE out of the box does not have any way to encrypt the traffic so that is why we're going to set up the GRE tunnel and then we're going to set up IPsec to ensure that our traffic is safe, secure, and encrypted from end to end. Today's lab, we are assigned to connect router one to the H, or excuse me, router one, the HQ router to a remote location, router two. Use a GRE tunnel and protect it with IPsec. Be sure to follow these steps to make it secure. Step one, set up the GRE tunnel and ping across. Step two, secure the tunnel with the following settings. Step three, make sure you can ping the tunnel on both sides. And step four, configure OSPF, RIP, or EIGRP to ping the loopbacks on both sides. Without further ado, let's jump on to router one. And we're going to hit enter a bunch of times and we're going to do a quick show IP interface brief just to take a look at our topology here. As we can see, we have a loopback interface as well as a fast Ethernet. Let's do a quick show IP route. And it looks like we have the connected interface we saw above as well as the fast Ethernet and a static route pointing towards our ISP. So let's go ahead and try ping the public IP address, excuse me, on the other side. That's going to be 2.12.14.7.2. Um, and you can see we can ping across. Uh, that should be all we need to see. We can jump over to router 2. Uh, we're going to hit enter a bunch of times here. Oops. And we'll do a quick show IP interface brief. And on this one as well, we'll do a show IP route. And as you can tell, we have the two connected interfaces as well as the static route. Now, let's go ahead and while we're on router two, we're gonna go into configuration mode. And here we're going to do interface tunnel 10. And here we're going to assign an IP address. Our lab calls for 172.16.1.2 with a slash 24 subnet. And we're also going to specify the tunnel source. This is going to be our interface facing towards our gateway most of the time. Uh, this is going to be where we will be receiving those GRE packets from. In our case on router 2, that's going to be fast Ethernet 1 slash 0. And now we're going to also hit tunnel and specify the destination. And this is going to be the public facing address assigned to router 1, which is 183.169.2. And we're going to go ahead and exit this configuration mode. And if we do a quick show IP interface brief, you'll notice the console has informed us that that tunnel interface is now up. And we can verify that by going to interface mode and viewing that, in fact, the status and protocol is up. However, we have not configured the other side. So GRE also doesn't have a way to tell if the other side is alive, at least that we've configured. You can configure a keep alive, and you only have to configure that on one side. To do that, if we wanted to, we would go back into configuration mode. We would jump into the tunnel interface, and we could specify a keep alive. And here we can specify how often we want to send those, so every 10 seconds. And then we can specify how many retries before we will consider that interface down. Again, you do not have to configure this on both sides. You can configure it on one side and you'll be good to go. In our case, we're not going to configure that at all because we're going to be setting up IPsec. So let's go ahead and jump on router 1. And over here, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go into configuration mode, tunnel 10. We're going to specify the tunnel source as being the interface facing our gateway. And now we're also gonna specify the tunnel destination as being the public facing address on router two, which is 212.14.7.2. And we're gonna exit that. And now we're gonna do a quick ping across to make sure we can reach the other side. And this should be verifiable by ping in 16.1.2 and unreachable why is that what did we do wrong let's take a look uh, so it looks like we configured the tunnel source as 0 slash 0 on this side the tunnel destination as 212.14.7.2 what did we do wrong here can anyone tell me why can't we ping across 
you may have noticed that I did not configure the interface to have an IP address. So we're going to jump back in on interface tunnel 10 and we're going to say IP address 172.16.1.1 with a slash 24 subnet. Now let's try again. Let's do a ping 172.16.1.2. And you can see we're successful. Now, uh, I purposely did not include the IP address just because I'd like to show you even without the uh, the IP address. The console was telling me that that status was changed to up. So it's kind of tricky here. We want to make sure uh, that we can actually ping across. And again, it's going to assume that the other side is configured correctly and that it can reach it without that keep alive. There's no way for it to know. Now let's go ahead and see if we can ping the routes on the other side. Uh, the loopback was 10.30.30.1 on the other side and we can't reach that and that's because we have not told router 1 if we do a show IP route we have not told it where to reach that other side so we do new, we do now have a new connected route which is through router 10 and it says anything is going to be sourced to that address in the 172.16.10 slash 24 uh, it's going to hit that interface. Let's go ahead and set up. We're going to hit enter a bunch of times here. Let's go ahead and go into configuration mode and we're going to go ahead and set up our tunnel. So our first command we're going to do is crypto it's a camp and we're going to hit a question mark here. Here we have a couple different options. Our first thing that we're going to want to configure is a policy, which is going to allow us to specify what protection suite we're going to use. So in our case, we're going to do a policy. And here if we hit question mark again, it's going to allow us to specify a priority. We're just going to make it 10. If we hit a question mark here, we're going to have a couple different options. Here where we can specify our encryption methods. Uh, how we want to authenticate and so on and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and do an authentication pre-share. We're just going to work our way down the line. And actually here, you don't actually get to specify the pre-shared key. We'll do that here in just a moment. We're going to do encryption and the lab calls for AES. We're going to do a lifetime of 3600. We're going to do a hash of MD5. And let's see, we're going to do a Diffie-Hellman group of 16, and that's specified by group 16. Now, I do want to make sure that you guys understand, depending on the version of iOS you have and the model you have, you may have different options. So that's it for this. We're going to exit out of this. So we've configured our policy. Now we're going to specify something that's called a transform set. And to do that, we're going to type in crypto. IPsec transform set and if we hit a question mark here it's going to let us specify a tag uh, we can name this whatever for our case we're just going to do lab IPsec underscore one and if I hit enter there it's going to tell me that is an incomplete command and that's because I have not specified what I would like to encrypt with as far as our phase two is concerned so I'm going to hit up on this and I'm going to hit a space and I'm going to hit a question mark. Here, uh, we do not have any directions in the lab, so feel free to use whatever choice you would like. Here, I'm going to specify ESP and we're going to do AES question mark. And why not? Let's use ESP. Uh, let's do MD5 again and we'll do that and hit enter. Now it's going to bring us down into a new uh, configuration mode here, and we're just going to hit a question mark. We have a default exit mode and no, so we can negate commands from its defaults if we'd like. In our case, we're just going to go into mode, hit a question mark, and this is going to be a transport tunnel. We're going to hit enter, and now we're going to be able to exit this and hit enter a couple times. We're so close to being done, we're going to go ahead and specify our key real quick. So we're going to do crypto IPsec key. And hit question mark, and that is not correct. Actually, it's crypto is a camp key. And we're going to hit question mark here, and you can see we now have our options. So, in our case, our key is supposed to be super secret key. And if we hit question mark, it's going to ask us for a host name or address. We're going to go based on an address. And here we're going to hit a question mark. Now, if you're going to use IP version 6, it's going to ask you to go ahead and specify that here. This is an IP version 4 lab. So we're going to leave it alone, and we're just going to put in the public address of router 2, which is 212.14.7.2. If you would like for this key to be used on any IP address, we could specify it as 0.0.0. .0 
um, like that. But in our case, we're just going to want it to be just this one, and we're going to specify that. And we're so close to being done. Now we're going to go type in crypto IPsec profile. And it's going to ask us for another word name here. We're going to do IPsec lab underscore two. And here we're going to specify our transform set. So we're going to do set transform set. And here we're going to specify the policy that we created earlier or rather the transform set. And that was lab IPsec underscore one. And that is it for our configuration. Now we just need to go apply that to our interface. We will apply that to the GRE tunnel. And now we're actually gonna specify that we're switching the tunnel mode to use IPsec and it's going to be IP version 4. We had a question mark there, it's a legal command. However, if you were using IP version 6 here, you'd put IP version 6. Now we're going to specify the protection mode, and as you can see, as soon as we configured that, you'll notice that the uh, state has changed to down, and that's because the other side is not able to authenticate, therefore the tunnel is no longer legally up. So now we're going to specify tunnel protection, IPsec and if we hit a question mark it's going to ask for the profile and now it's going to ask for the profile that we configured which in our case we configured IPsec lab underscore two so I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that hit enter and we're going to do an exit and now we're going to do a quick show IP interface brief and you'll notice that our status is up however our protocol is still down and that's because the other side is not authenticated so let's do a quick show run and what we're going to do to speed this up is we're actually going to just copy and paste our config over with some changes. So let's go ahead and open up Notepad. And we're going to paste our config in. And we're just going to change this to uh, router 2's address, which is, excuse me, we're going to change this to router 1's address, which is 183.16.9.2. And we're just going to copy this and paste it in over on this side and we're going to exit and now we're going to go into uh, the interface for the tunnel and we're going to do the same thing that we did on the other side okay and we have copied our config over and now we've applied it to the interface and as you can see our tunnel is now up if we do a back out again and we'll do a show ip interface brief you'll notice that our status and protocol is now appears to be up so let's go ahead and try pinging across the tunnel yet again from router 2 to router 1's tunnel interface and we are live we can send it across the interface and we are able to ping the other side however we still do not have the routes for the loopbacks on either side uh, so let's go ahead and configure that while we're on router 2 i'm going to go into configure terminal and this will actually be the last task for this lab so configure OSPF RIP or EIGRP in my case I'm gonna go with OSPF so let's go ahead and do router OSPF Oops. and I'm gonna do process ID 1 and we're gonna specify our network commands here we're gonna put in the uh, interfaces that we would like to advertise out of uh, so you could do this in interface mode or you could do this here. I'm going to specify this here by doing 172.16.1.2 and I'm going to say absolutely that interface and we're going to include that in area 0. Now we're going to do network again and we're going to specify our loopback interface which is 10.30.30.1 and we're going to do area 0 here. And we're going to exit this side, and now we're going to go over and go on our other side, on router 1. And immediately after we hit exit here, we're going to do router OSPF, process ID 1. Work. And we're going to do, on this side, 172.16.1.1. And we're going to include that in area 0 also. And last but not least, we're going to go ahead and include our loop back on this side, which I believe is 10.20.20.1. And you can see we're already connected and we're already sharing routes uh, with router 2. If we do a quick show IP route, 
you will notice that we have a route that has been learned from the other side and it is this network here uh, 192.168.22.20 uh, or excuse me <laughs> that's my route of we've learned from the other side 10.30.30.1 and if we were to go over to router 2 and we do a show IP route, uh, we should have a route. Oh, I must have got and I must have configured router 1 wrong. Let's do a quick show IP interface brief. And I did. My loop back on this side is this. So we can fix that really easy. We're just going to go back to configure terminal. We're going to hit our up arrow a couple times. And we're going to hit that and we're going to do no. And then we're going to go to this one. And we're going to backspace all of this out. And we're going to hit paste. And there we go. All right. Now if we were to jump back over to router 2, on this side we should see that route coming in now. And let's go ahead and try pinging across to that loopback. So 192.168.22.1. And surprisingly, it says it's unreachable because I configured the wrong IP address here. 168. And there you have it. It's pinging across. Uh, I did make a mistake here. Uh, but as you can tell, it is pinging across. So that is it. We've completed the lab. And that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, or subscribe. And I'd really do appreciate it. Thanks again.